Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was meant to get on yesterday. Uh, let me just bring up the chat to make sure everything's working. Um, I was meant to get on yesterday with this live announcement, but unfortunately, uh, it did come yesterday, but I was asked if I wouldn't review it or announce it until the exact time now. Um, so I had no, <laughs> I had no choice. Um, I had to start it now. They asked me if I could do it at 1 p.m., which is 2 p.m. Japan time. Um, so I really had no choice. So I had to come on now. Um, so we've got some interesting things. I've got two um, things I'm going to show you today, actually, two pretty exciting little products. Um, one I'm incredibly excited. Well, I'm actually excited about both of them. Um, but, you know, I thought that I'd. Uh, pop on now. Uh, they asked me if it was 2 p.m. and I think it's 2 p.m. Japan time. <laughs> Let me just check I haven't blown this because imagine that if I did do it at the wrong time, but I'm pretty sure uh, I'm just going to have current time in Japan. Yep. Yep, we're right to go. Um, yeah, so I got this box yesterday, and it's killed me because I wanted to uh, uh, unbox it with you all. Um, I'm just waiting to see because a lot of you are probably going to be saying, what on earth is it? Um, what have you got? And stuff like that. And you're probably going to be able to guess. Um, someone said they can see the box. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Hang on. Ooh. Hang on. Here we go. You ready for this? Do, 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 do. Woohoo! Let me just see if I can make this so it's not so exposed. Go away, exposure. I have the 70 to 180. Um, how good is this? Uh, let me just show this one. Um, so, yes, I've got it now. Uh, it came yesterday, and it's killed me because I wanted to do this yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, I know Jason and Danny are live at the moment, but... I had no choice, guys. I'm sorry because um, normally I wouldn't go on live while Danny and uh, uh, Jason are live, but I had no choice because I wanted to open this up. They asked me if I'd do it at uh, 1 p.m. Melbourne time. Um, so I have now got it. Now I've only got it for three days, so I've really got to make sure that I push this for the next three days and and learn as much as I can because th this thing they're they're very very hard to get at the moment. Um, <laughs> empty box. I'm just laughing at that. Uh, they're really, really hard to get at the moment. Um, and I've got one of the first that's available, well, definitely in Australia. And that's why I can only have it for three days, because I've got to ship it to other people uh, that would probably want to review it and test it out. Um, and it's one of the first in the world, apparently. That's the full version, release versions that, that are out there. So I thought we'd talk about this. And then I've got a second uh, really exciting thing that I'm going to unbox with you uh, as well. So sorry, Danny and Jason. I just had no choice. But let's start the show um, because I'm really excited to unbox this and give you a look at it. Well, g'day everyone. Uh, been really excited about giving you this uh, unboxing that I've talked about. I can actually change the heading in a minute because I'll say that it's actually a, um, uh, what it is, is these Tamron 70 to 180. Uh, I got this yesterday, but due to the fact that it's only just been announced, I believe now in the US, um, I um, couldn't post it until today because originally I knew I was getting it yesterday. Uh, but when I said, oh, I'm going to do an unboxing immediately, they asked me if I'd hold off uh, until now. So um, we'll have a look at it. Uh, now, the funny thing is, I'm not going to lie to you. I did use this last night, but I thought I'd put it back in the box so you can see how it is. Because I, uh, due to the lockdown that we've got at the moment, um, I took it out last night and I did um, some photos with Kerry. Uh, 
outside. I did check and <laughs> legally I was able to do it. So I went to a, a nice park area where we were on our own next to a river and we did some shooting with it down there. So I have recorded that and I may get that up today or it might be early tomorrow. Um, so you will start to see exactly what this lens can do and boy, you are in for a uh, shock how good this lens is. Um, I adored it. And Kerry made me laugh because she's usually the one that uses the 70 to 200. Um, Sony lens, which is right here. Um, so she's usually the ones that uses this. Um, but she, when she put this on the camera and she held it, she went, oh, it is lovely and light, isn't it? And she really noticed a difference when she was using it. Uh, and she also loved the focus and things like that. Now, she's often more of an expert than what I am uh, because she uses this extensively in weddings and things like that. Whereas, to be completely honest with you now, I don't use this much because I just don't like lugging around the weight or I tend to use the 135 GM or the uh, 24 GM um, so this probably will get sold um, and I probably will get one of these once things settle down I don't want to sell anything at the moment due to how bad it is um, the economy at the moment with the virus but uh, the difference is is quite remarkable in how this feels on the camera as compared to how this feels and this is the f4 version um, you know, and if you say compared that to the GM version, it would be drastically different. Um, so I can now talk to you about how it is. So if you have questions and stuff like that that you'd like to ask as an initial uh, opinion about how it went, um, I can um, talk about that. Let me just take that lens cap off. Um, I can talk about how it went last night in the shoot. And like I said, I will be posting those images. I haven't even downloaded them yet, but I have looked. I photographed using um, this little setup that I've got here. And um, I was looking through a, a really decent monitor, so I was getting an idea about how the, uh, the images looked. Um, so stay tuned for that full review. Like I said, I'll have that up in a day or so. But before we start, I just want to see what people are saying in the chat. Um, so let's just see who's here. Panda's here. G'day, Panda. How are you? Um, Aaron saying no gimbal. No, it's not a gimbal, Aaron. I haven't got a gimbal this time. Triple uh, Zero saying ASMR. That's because I did an ASMR of this the other day. <laughs> I love it. Um, Visual said anxiety at its peak. Hero said yes. Carol said hi there. G'day, Carol. How are you? Jeffrey said hello, David. Photomix says left Danny and Jason so fast. <laughs> thanks, Ike. Uh, thanks for supporting me, mate. Uh, Anthony said g'day, David. Um, Langston said oi. Um, Hero said, right. Um, Barry said, hi, David. Hero said, laugh out loud. Maven said, whoa, I see the box. I know, I'll open this for you a minute and just show you the lens. Um, Hero said, boys are over there rambling. Um, oh, that'd be Jason and Danny, I suppose. Mike said, howdy, everyone. Uh, Dre Day said, I see a box. Yep. Uh, Maven said, um, tease. Uh, Kevin said, you see the box too. Um, Photo said 70 to 180. Yep. And I'll talk about this extensively in a few minutes with you all. Rick said, Go, Dave. Matt Graham would just announce it. Um, so it's in Jap so it's Japanese. Well, I don't know if it was made in Japan. Let me just check. Does it say? Uh, it's probably Vietnam. It says print. Well, this is printed in Vietnam. Uh, it might say on the lens. So I'll have a look at what it says uh, inside. I really don't care much about that, really, though, to be honest, where it's made. Um, Hero says, I know what it is. Don said, A93. I love it. Carol said, ooh. Marvin said, yes. Photomex says, I might need to rent um, some here because I want to go uh, shoot again, laugh out loud. Today was fun. I did watch that a little bit, Ike, but I was outside um, while I was doing it. But I did see you shooting that model uh, in your studio. Uh, I just didn't put a comment in, but I was there. Triple um, Zero said, a white Tamron. Hero said, Pray, praise the Tamron. <laughs> I love it. Kevin says, I can't wait. Don says, empty box. I hope it's not. No, it's not because I've already had a look. Um, Hero said, thank you. You were doing uh, a live just saying. Um, Maven said, sanitize the box. Um, Dan said, so jelly right now. Um, Trev said, three days. What's the rush? Well, the rush is that it has to get to other reviewers. Um, I believe it's going to be released uh, in Melbourne next month uh, in May. Um, I think it was around the 15th or something. I could be wrong, but I'll get those exact dates for you eventually. But I think it was the 15th of May. So these are now just out for certain reviewers. Now, I know I'm the first in Australia to get my hands on one. 
There might be some others around the world, but I am probably going to be one of the first that get out there and has real world reviews where I've actually shot it uh, properly like I have with Kerry yesterday. So stay tuned for that. Um, so I do have to pass this on to others. I'll get it back for full reviews though later on. It might just be a couple of weeks down the track uh, once other reviewers have got it and done what they need to do. I might be able to get it back for a more extensive review and then I can really do some uh, really good things then if I have it say for a week or two weeks. I will be getting one, it's just a matter of when though. And I can tell you I will be getting one after using it yesterday, uh, that's for sure. Um, it's not actually, um, it's not actually wide, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Thanks, it says, likely don't have enough to go around. Yeah, well, I haven't, but I have heard that the production is going to be pretty good on these. Uh, and to be completely honest, after using it yesterday, I think these things, once people see how good they are, uh, they're going to sell like crazy. Um, Fenomix says, do what you got to do, David. They are talking about doing a live Thursday at 7 p.m. Oh, disgraceful. Um, Trev said, yeah, that, uh, but no one's going anywhere at the moment. Captive audience. Well, that's true. Rick said, Dan Watson, Mac Granger has just announced it. I'm happy to see you with this breaking news. I remember when it was you and 19 subscribers on the line. Thank you so much, Rick. And you've been there right from the beginning. Uh, Dan Watson popped up with one, two. Um, laugh out loud, YouTube time fights. I love it. I know. Didn't realize it was a thing. Well, it's not really. Um, Fredomix says, yeah, Danny and Jason are on YouTube live now. Uh, they were late on their live stream. Um, Don said, wait for Potato Jet to come out online with one as well. Um, Mark's here as well. G'day, Mark. How are you? Anthony said, down by the river. Yep, I was down by the river shooting with it yesterday. Kevin says, I just opened the damn thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to build tension. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to get abused. I can just see it. All right. You are talking too much today that you are stealing their viewers from their live stream. Uh, uh, Danny and Jason, da uh, Jason and Danny are complaining that you are stealing their live views from their stream. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do it, guys. I just had to do it. I promised Tamron that I'd do it. Um, anyway, let's go. So we're we ready. Woohoo. I might just put the uh, light up a little bit. Uh, from here because we'll open it up and then I'm going to talk about it because I'll talk about it and I might even connect it to my computer and then I'll try and focus on something and show you how the close focus and that works. So let's go. So the box, typical Tamron box. Uh, it does say on the back that uh, it's the 70 to 180. I'll just sort of, let me just see if I can, is it going to I'll just have to tell you, I think. It does say on the back that it's the 70 to 180 F2.8, uh, the D13VXD. Um, it gives you a model number, uh, etc. It tells you that it's a uh, 0 0.85 close focusing. And I'm going to talk about this uh, because this is going to be some amazing things about how this will work. Uh, let me just open this up. I don't want to damage the box, though, because, like I said, I've got to send this back. All right, so let's have a look. Oh, let me just put my watch on silent. Okay, so inside the box, you just get your normal instructions. These are always the same uh, as everything else. And then let's just take it out. I'm just trying not to damage this box. Here we go. Oh, please don't damage the box. They'll, I'll feel guilty. Oh, no, there we go. Because they do put these things in really tight. Uh-oh, I think I'm going to have to damage it. Oh, there we go. We just throw it over there. You ready? I'm like a kid in a candy shop when I get stuff like this. Um, feels really good like your typical Tamron lens. I mean, look, if you look at it, it's basically very, very similar uh, to what you have with the um, Tamron 28-75. It's exactly the same material that you're dealing with uh, there. So, you know, it's, it's and I've, like I've said before, I think this is probably one of the strongest materials out there. This polycarbonate that they use on these lenses is, is extremely, um, extremely strong. Uh, and like I said, I've had this one 12 months and you know, <laughs> 
people that follow me know what I'm like with my lenses, that I, I don't treat them with kid gloves, that's for sure. Uh, my Sony lenses um, are always marked, whereas these look like the day that I got it. So this is the, the 70 to 200, uh, the 70 to 180. But let me show you, now this is the F4 version. So if you look, I'll try and hold them so that they're at the bottom. Let me just take the lens hood off. So it's slightly smaller uh, than the 70 to 200. Let me just bring it up there, you can sort of see that. Uh, it looks, uh, I think it's a similar width. What's the 70 to 200? Uh, 72, no, it's a 67. So it is, it is also slightly um, smaller as well, uh, if you look at them directly on like that. Uh, so it's slightly smaller, uh, or in the width, and it's also slightly uh, smaller in the length, if you look at it. Now, that's incredible when you think about it, um, because if you think about it, this is an F4, this is a 2.8 lens. But, but uh, look, I, I'm always honest with you guys, there are some controls on this one, like you've got your, your manual AFM switches on there, uh, you've got whether you want it to be full or, or limited in the autofocus. You've got stabilization on this lens uh, and your mode choice as well. So there are other features and plus you've also got uh, the focus buttons that are on there as well. So if you are after control, well then you've got more control on this. Uh, and also the stability, the stabilization on this lens uh, will make it a little bit bigger as well. But I don't care about any of those things to be completely honest. Um, after using this, uh, yesterday on my A9 and the A7 III, uh, this is unbelievable. It, it is so light for a 2.8 lens and that focal wrench uh, length. Um, beautiful focus, I mean extremely fast focus. Uh, like it, it didn't miss a beat to be honest, it was, it was amazing. And I'll show you these results because I had Kerry running, I had a jumping up and down, doing all different things that I can show you how uh, this works in real life. Let me just put the um, the actual lens protectors on, sunshades. Oh. There we go. And then put that one on. It's particularly smaller if you put the lens shade on though. Um, you know, it's, it's drastically different if you wanted to put it in your bag uh, like that and, and hold it so um, you know, you've got, you want to keep the lens on if you wanted to protect it. And that's often the way that I work because I usually just leave these sunshades on and I take the lens covers off and put them in my bag so I can immediately grab it out of the, out of the box and then shoot straight away. So it's important for me uh, to do that just because often I'm running and gunning and doing things very fast and I don't usually ever, to be honest, leave lens caps on. So it's nice that it even has that size um, in it. And in fact, the incredible thing is that I tried it yesterday that just in my small backpack and I've just got the uh, I'm using now which I love and I put a review up of it um, what's the name of it the um, think tank uh, backpack that I'm using the retrospect 15 I can put this in with a uh, lens uh, with a camera on it I can also put the 28 to 75 and the 17 to 28 all in that one small backpack like, like for a wedding photographer this is unbelievable because you can put the holy trinity of your lenses uh, all in one small backpack that doesn't weigh much at all. Uh, whereas before, if I was lugging around, you know, like if you, say for instance, if you had the equivalent lens, which is the G Master version of this, um, and the G Master lenses, it would be that heavy uh, that it could cause, uh, you know, I mean, you get back strain at the end of the day. So it looks amazing. Um, I have just done some tests just this morning actually with it. Um, I was doing some tests on sharpness compared to the F4 because in a lot of ways, um, this is going to be a, a really big competitor to the, to the F4 version. And the reason why I'm saying that is because they're most more closely matched in price. I'll have to check what the uh, F4 version is in a minute in Australia. Um, so they're probably more matched in price uh, that way. but. This, to me, would definitely be the way that I would go now, uh, unless you need the extra 20 mil. Now, I've done a test this morning. Uh, I shot with this and this on a tripod, uh, looking down a road, um, and I did the this on the 200 mil and this on the 180. So I'm gonna be able to show you on the review 
what the difference is that you lose. And it's only a very small amount. So it's not that much at all. But but clearly, if that does matter to you, um, well, then the 70 to 200 is the way that you would want to go. If, if you definitely need the 200, you would know. But the test that I did this morning proves to me that I don't really need it because it was very, very close um, in how they... Um, looked. Uh, it just cut a fraction off on either side. Uh, focus was outstanding, probably one of the fastest zoom lenses that I'd, I'd used. Um, the focus is unbelievable in this thing, how good it is, uh, and I was really, really impressed with that. Uh, the sharpness in the camera itself looked incredible. Uh, like I said, I'll tell you more about that when I download the images and you'll be able to see for yourself. Um, I even shot a brick wall. <laughs> I even shot a brick wall. Uh, this morning for the uh, pixel peepers that would like to have a look at a brick wall. Now, I don't know what if there's going to be um, any lens corrections because Lightroom won't have that at the moment. So I've got to be careful on what I show because Lightroom will eventually correct for that. Um, having no image stabilization didn't bother me at all. Uh, I was using the A9 and the A7 III and I just made sure that my shutter speed was up enough uh, that I wouldn't have uh, any movement and I was shooting at 125th for instance and that's pretty slow for a 200 millimeter lens uh, and the images look tack sharp um, so yeah I mean th there's not much that I can say that's bad about it the only thing uh, uh, there's also a lock so you can lock this uh, or you can unlock it so it stops that creep um, the only thing I suppose that could be an issue is that this one uh, let me just take the this one is completely internal, so your zoom ring is completely internal in this one. Um, whereas on this Tamron, your zoom will come out a little bit. So that could be an issue if you wanted to put this on a gimbal. But I've tested it on my um, Moser Air 2, which is a big gimbal. That will take massive amounts of weight, and that handle it without a problem. And to be honest, what I tend to do, if I'm doing it and putting something like this on a gimbal, I'll put it so it's halfway out, that's where I'll do the balance, then it's not much for the gimbal to take, you know, your full or, or bringing it right in. Um, so that that's one good way that you can do that. And I tried the Rowan, uh, sorry, the uh, Moser Air 2, and that handled this without a problem. Um, so I think, it, you know, it could be a great... Uh, gimbal lens as well. The other benefit too is if you have the 17 to 28 and the 28 to 75, they all take the same filter. I mean, how cool is that for for video that you can um, use a 67 mil filter on each lens? So yes, there's compromises, and the compromises I suppose are that you haven't got stabilization in this. Uh, another compromise is that you haven't got all the buttons. Um, but the saving in cost is worth that, I believe, because I think it's much better to have this the 2.8 uh, than what the F4 version of this is, for instance. Uh, and I, I'm be pretty certain, looking at the images on the back of the camera, that this is going to be sharper than what this is. Uh, the, and the autofocus was definitely quicker on this than what it was on the F4 version. And I found the F4 version in my testing is about the same as what the G Master is. Um, so, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'll take you through a website soon and, and I'll just go through some things that I found yesterday from that reviewer, the German reviewer uh, that looked at this as well. But I, th I think this is going to be absolutely incredible. I think this will sell like crazy. Um, the autofocus from my testing last night, and I did it in very, very low light. That was the only thing I had to do because I had to get out after Kerry got home from work yesterday. Um, it was very, very low light, so I had to really pump up the ISO and things. Um, but the autofocus in those low light conditions was outstanding for a, you know, a 70 to 180 lens. Uh, I found missing the 20 mil, uh, particularly after now that I've done the test with the the, uh, that F4 version is not going to bother me at all. Uh, it was only a small amount on either side that you, um, the difference. So that's not going to really uh, bother me one little bit, particularly if you had something like an A7R4 where you could crop in as much as you liked. Um, the close focus is really good. Now, it's not as good as the 28 to 75, um, but I'll, I'll do some testing on that 
uh, to show you, but it's usable, and that's one really good thing about this. And I'll talk about the close focus distance in a minute, and it is drastically different than what the GM versions of these lenses are. Yeah. So if you did want to use this as a makeshift macro, uh, it, you can get by, but it's just not as sharp as what the 28 to 75 is. But that doesn't surprise me because you you know you've got a much larger zoom. Uh, here than if you're dealing with the the uh, 17 to 28 or the 28 to 75, but it still is usable. It just gets a little bit softer on the edges, uh, but the center is still very very sharp. Uh, it, the overall sharpness, from what I could tell by looking through the Atmos Ninja, uh, it's very very sharp overall, like the center and the corners, um, which is also really good as well. Um, and I couldn't see much distortion when I was looking at those images of those brick walls, even though how much I hate doing those. I just thought I'd do it just to have a look at. Um, but let me just go to the chat because I want to see what people say about this. I have got something else to unbox with you too later. Uh, let me put it over there. I just don't want to drop it. <clears throat> uh, Weight-wise, I mean, it's, it, it's hard to tell when you pick both of these up. I can't remember what this one weighs, but I know when Kerry put this on, um, she was surprised how little this weighed um, on the camera for a 2.8 lens, and she definitely made a comment about that. I should have recorded saying it, uh, actually. Um, so let's just go to the chat, because I'm curious to what you guys have to say. Because if there's something, too, that you'd like me to test, put it down, and I might have the time in the next couple of days to talk about it. Um. <clears throat> All right, let's start here. Uh, Panda said, looks nice. Um, guy with the camera said, that's sort of big. Well, it's not if you compare it to the other um, lenses. Um, it, it's smaller than the GM24, and it's much smaller than the uh, 2.8 GM. Um, loving the sound effects. Thanks, Bruce. Jeffrey said, I love the expression when you open it. I know, I do get excited. Oh, everyone, put your lenses back into your pants. <laughs> Mark said, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking 2 p.m. Sundays Australian Eastern Standard Time. Oh, yeah, yeah that you're talking about the time. Um, Langston says, so uh, trading 20 mil for the same form factor for 2.8. Yep. Uh, like I said, so if that's an issue for you, then obviously the lens is not for you. Um, you're, you are trading that 20 mil, though, but you're gaining uh, the 2.8 over this and much better focus. I, I, the focus was outstanding. Um, on this. Um, <clears throat> so is the sharpness too, by the way, Langston. Uh, should have a site where the streamers can post their times. <laughs> oh, that's so we all don't get mixed up. Yeah, I know. Like I normally, I wouldn't go on normally the same time as Danny um, and that, but like I said, I had to post it today. I had no choice because they asked me to do it. Um, should have a site. Oh, yeah, I read that already. Kevin said, I took advice on the 28 to 75, and that was the winner. Can't wait for your full review. Yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, Langston said, I should position myself as some uh, uh, BS authority to hand out time slots. Oh, so, you, so we all don't cross over, especially now with the uh, coronavirus. Everyone's sort of uh, hopping online. I've noticed that. Um, what else? Uh, Fanny Mick said, nice. Alexander said, hi, David. Looks like a beauty. It is. I'm really happy with it, actually. Um, do you use clear protective filters? No, I never do. I never put a clear protective filter on. There's, there's two reasons why <clears throat> I don't do that. Look, some of you may completely not agree with this, but this is my belief. Um, I've paid all that money for a, a really beautiful lens. I'm not going to put glass on the top of that, which could take away from that lens. So that's number one. Um, number two is that those filters uh, can occasionally get stuck and they are a nightmare to get off if you wanted to put another filter on or do something like that. So that's the second, and that's what happened to me. And one, when that happened to me, that was why I decided I'm never gonna put another one again. So I don't do it. I've found that with these lenses, I mean, as long as you keep the, um, as long as you keep the, the lens hood on, nothing's really gonna happen to your lens anyway. Um, I mean, if I'm traveling around and, and, and I'm going a long distance, I'll put the lens hoods on. But if I'm generally doing a wedding, doing things like that, the lens hood is kept off. I, I don't want to have lens hoods around. I want to immediately grab my camera out and be able to shoot. I, I mean, there was an interesting video um, that uh, I think it was Tony Northrup did, where he grabbed a key 
or something and he scratched the front of the lens element like really quite badly and you couldn't see it when he did his normal shooting you couldn't see it. yes if he if he shot on f16 or f18 you could see it but anything sort of down below that like f2.8 uh 5.6 i think even f8 you couldn't see it you couldn't see any of the damages at all that were on that lens now i'm not saying that's a good thing but uh that you wouldn't do that deliberately obviously um but it's a judgment that you have to make. I prefer to be able to shoot that lens immediately or that camera immediately. I'd hate to miss a moment. And I'm always losing these things, so I just don't put them on. But that, that's just a personal um, choice. Um, Panda says, is going to behave like a kid behind the scenes. Uh, smaller diameter and length, but still gets the job done. I know the feeling. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about, but that, that is funny. I love it. Um, I just got here. Can you start over? I was just showing the lens. Um, so I've been showing the uh, Tamron 17, 70 to 180. Uh, I believe it's being announced today. Everything is being released today. I believe that you're going to be able to buy it from November mid, uh, sorry, mid-May. Um, so we're about, what, a month away from getting these in the shops. Uh, I think uh, pre-ordering is probably going to start from today or tomorrow. So pre-ordering will start in the next few hours. Uh, so if you did definitely want to get one, it might be advantageous to put a pre-order in uh, straight away. Um, let me see. Uh, like I said, that could be really fun on a Rowan S for some Michael Bay spinny shots. Uh, it work. It works pretty well. I tried it. Like I said, I tried it on my. I should try and do that in the review if I get the time, um, because the video autofocus on this is great. It, it's really good. Uh, much better than anything I'd sort of tried before. So I was surprised how well the video autofocus was with this um, lens. So it's. Uh, I should try and do that on the, my um, Mosa Air Two. Panda says, I use the MV protector uh, for all my lenses. Yeah, so he does. It's a personal choice. Some always do, some don't. Um, Stan said, who else jumped over from the Monday Live? Um, you late, Stan the man. Hero said, laugh out loud, you're late. I'm sending, all J I'm sending Jason all your names. <laughs> I love it. Photomeric, laugh out loud, you're right. Uh, the panda says, I want to protect my glass when using UV uh, protectors yet. And like I said, I've never had a problem with the lens itself because I always keep the lens hoods on. Uh, but it's, it's really up to yourself. Um, Langston said, David, did you use it on the A9? Yes, I did. Uh, the review that I did yesterday, uh, I did video on the A9 uh, using it um, because I wanted to show how fast the autofocus was and things like that. Uh, so I did do that yesterday, and I'll show you the focus in a minute. I'll see if I can get it to work in here. Uh, I'm not sure if I can get away enough, but I'll try and focus on a little Dalek, and I'll show you it working uh, live so you can see how it focuses uh, through the camera. So I'll see if I can get that going uh, in a few minutes, actually. Once I've got through these questions, I'll show you live. Um... So I did some, yes, so I did some stills and video with the A9. I did most of the stills on the A7 III because I think uh, that'll probably be the main market for this. Look, it's still, I'd still love, I will use this on my A9, but you're going to get a lot of A7 III users that will buy this lens particularly, um, or even an A6000 series. This would be a great lens on that as well. Uh, it certainly balances really great on the A series cameras, that's for sure. Um, so... Um, Oh Lord, uh, the corona is going to David. He's shooting brick walls now. I know, I did it this morning. I was laughing as I was doing it, Ike. Um, better than fighting AF on trees. I love it. Uh, Dan said, how many footsteps paces in uh, compensating for 20? I wonder. Yeah, I didn't measure it, Dan. All I looked at was the image itself and how much was being cropped off as I shot down the road. Uh, and it wasn't much. It, I mean, I'm not lying. It is. You are still losing uh, your crop range but it's not much at all. But I'll show that in the review and you can make up your decision whether you think that's an issue or not. Um, Mark said, thanks for showing us. Uh, not a fan of uh, tromboning lenses. Um, the panda photographer said, people are concerned what on the soda can Corona... Oh, gin. <laughs> What's in mine, you mean? No, this is just Coke today. Well, if the Moser handles it, I might as well... I might have to take this on my Rowan S. Yeah, you should try it. Uh, it would probably work on that too, Langston. Um, I've heard that due to the focus breathing issue, uh, the lens at 180 gives an effect of being uh, at 
130-150. Please test this alongside the GM lens. Uh, I haven't got the GM lens, so I can't do that. Um, and look, I'm not certain that there's a lot of issues here. People start talking about focus breathing, but focus breathing can be a real, from what I understand, because remember, I shoot from the perspective of just being a real photographer that goes out, shoots models, shoots weddings and everything else. And to be completely honest with you, I've never worried about focus breathing. It's never, ever bothered me at all. Where it could be an issue is if you manually focus on something like a... Um, uh, a macro shot and then your focus breathing can change uh, if you say doing manual focusing or if you're doing uh, manual focusing in video and you want repeatability. Now remember repeatability sucks on these anyway be on any Sony lens because they're fly-by-wire so uh, I don't really think focus breathing is an issue and it might not be one that I even look at because I've never worried about it. I know uh, Pixel peepers and, and the real lens reviewers do and things like that. that like they m might look at it, but I don't know. I'll have a I'll have a think about it. Um, Ida Brown says now they treat you like a boss. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Who's treating me like a boss? Well, he came to Cali and he and got all Hollywood. I love it. Um, where was that? Um. Where did that? Where was that bit? Uh, la, 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 let me go down. Um, where were we? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, guy with the camera said, "Does it do twenty frames per second? Probably not. Uh, look, the only things I think will do twenty are the GM lenses. So again, if, if that's an issue, uh, you would have to um, use a GM lens. It probably does. I think it's fifteen or something like that. I think that's about where it is. But <laughs> it's more than enough uh, for most of anything that I would ever do. So. Uh, I don't really worry about that, but no, I don't think it will. I think the only lenses that do 20 uh, will do that. But if I think if you put it into manual focus, yes, it will. Um, so if you go manual, yes, it will. Uh, Kevin said, the last thing I need is more buttons. Hey, Hollywood Osler, I love it. Uh, you don't like buttons on the lens. Um, AJ says, can you compare the size when you extend the Tamron all the way out? Okay. Well, it will be bigger if I extend it all the way out, but it's probably not bigger than the GM. So it will be bigger if I do that, yes. Uh, let me... So it's a little bit bigger if we extend it completely out. So yes, it will be. Um, but the weight... I've got to check what the weight difference is. If someone is live in the chat can check what the uh, GM weighs, the F4 version, that might save me some time and I can talk about whether it's lighter than what this is, but it's gonna be way lighter than what the um, 2.8 version is. Remember, this is 2.8 though. This is a uh, F4 uh, version lens, big difference. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Mike said B&H just announced the lens in email. Okay, so they did just announce it, did they? I'll put the link down below in case if anyone's interested in getting it. Oh, now I do know the price. Uh, the price, <laughs> you're going to freak because it's the Aussie dollar. Um, the price in Australia is $2,399. Uh, now, I compared the GM last night. Now, that's taking into account um, the Australian dollar, which... When I last checked the other day, it was only 58 cents uh, US. So to be honest, the Australian dollar completely sucks. Uh, so it's 2399. Uh, the GM at the moment was around 34. Um, so you're saving over $1,000. It was about $1,000 saving as against going for the GM version uh, of the 2.8 lens. I think in the US, it's probably gonna be around about $1,200, $1,300. I think that's where, where it's gonna be, but we might be able to confirm that. Oh, there you go, US price is 1,199. So it's a great price uh, if you're in the US, but it's still, um, look, I know Aussies are gonna complain about this, but um, we, there's nothing we can do with the dollar rate at the moment. It, the dollar rate sucks. Everything I get, you've almost gotta add 50% on. Um, so it does suck, but it's still $1,000 cheaper than the GM. And the GM at the moment, that's at today's price. Uh, all the GMs will shortly go up. Everything at the moment will go up shortly due to the fact that our dollar has just done a nosedive. 
Um, so it'll probably save even more. But remember, you're probably gonna find in a few months anyway, uh, once things settle down, perhaps with a dollar and everything else, it may drop a little bit here in Australia. But the US price at 19, uh, 1,199 is a great price. Uh, particularly, Australia, it's still a good price. Um, but you, uh, you, you, there's nothing we can do about it, guys. It's what the dollar is at the moment. Um, so yeah, so the Australian price was $2,399, uh, and I believe it's going to be, I wrote that down yesterday, actually. Uh, uh, it is going to be uh, released on the 14th of May. Um, so I'm not sure when it's in, gonna be released in the US, but here in Australia, it's the 14th of May. That's in the shops. Uh, so I would say that if you did wanna get it, uh, now might be the time to um, actually pre-purchase it. Um, that folk, and I can tell you that I am definitely selling my F4. That as soon as the virus stuff settles down, I'm selling my F4, G Master, the G uh, lens that I've got, and I'm gonna buy this. I'm definitely, particularly after using it yesterday, guys, I'm gonna buy it. I'm not sponsored by Tamron. I'm telling you the truth. Um, this was amazing yesterday when I used it. The difference was quite, you know, outstanding. Um, Got to be a gimbal uh, next. Here I said, Langston said, um, I've heard due to the uh, the focus breathing issue, this lens at 180 gives you the effect of being 130 to 150. Please test this alongside the GM lens. Yep. Um, all I can do really, I suppose, is do a test at uh, 180 or whatever, and then just see if they look very similar between the two of them. I, I did do a test. So like I said, I did one at two. I did this at 200. Uh, and I did the other one at 180, and they look pretty similar to me, but I'll have to have a look at that. Test low light performance. Well, I tested it last night under very uh, low light conditions, uh, and it was amazing. But I'll do a test live for you in a minute. You can have a look. Um, Jeffrey says, can you take a look at the Rotolite Titan X2 to review? Uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to get that, Jeffrey. I'd love to have a look at it, though. Um, it does look interesting, but it's pretty expensive. Um, if I could get my hands on one, I'd love to have a look at it. Dan says, hello, David. Can you stand them side by side, not extended and no hoods on? You, I don't know whether you can tell from there, but the GM is, uh, if we look at it, it is definitely, uh, it's about... Well, if I put my hand down, you'll sort of see that it's it's like that. I'll hold them dead, dead like that and then bring them up to the camera and you'll see the difference. Let me just make sure that they're exactly the same on the bottom. So that's the difference without the hoods. So traveling them around in your camera bag can make a big difference if you're dealing with uh, working this way. And remember, this is the F4 version. There'd be a, a much bigger difference between, um, much bigger difference between this this and the GM, because the GM is way bigger than the F4 version. Um, so there's definitely a difference if it's uh, down. You've just got to remember though that it does uh, come out. Um, and like I said, I'll test the autofocus for you in a minute so you can have a look. Um, you stole Danny and Jason's Vong's video audience. I didn't mean to do that. Um, family of Tech said, hey everyone, here I said I can never do uh, that I'd cry. Um, I'm not sure what that was about. Um, Bob said, can you send that to me? I wish. <laughs> I don't want to send it back. Uh, this is going to kill me. I'm not joking. I loved using this that much yesterday that I said to Kerry, oh my God, I don't want to send it back. I just can't afford another lens at the moment because I'm not earning money due to this virus and everyone's cancelled and everything else. But if I could... I'm telling you, I would not give this back. Um, I'd be buying, I'm definitely buying, I can tell you 100%, I'm definitely gonna buy it. I know Sigma will bring out a 70 to 200 as well, but that's gonna be a massive heavy lens. It'll be beautiful as well to use. Um, I'm gonna sell my 70 to 200 F4, and I'm gonna buy this. The second I've got the funds to do it. Uh, de no doubt about it. Having that, the 17 to 28, and the 28 to 75 as a wedding photographer is gonna be amazing. Um, will uh, it zoom smoothly during video or is it a hopeless cause? I, I'll do some testing for you because I'll test these, how it looks for video as well. Uh, I did some yesterday and it looked pretty good, Ted. Um, but 
I, I, like I said, I, only, I was in a rush last night to try and do as much as I can, but I definitely zoomed in and zoomed out and checked all focus, and the focus was incredible uh, for the video. Uh, but stay tuned. I'll, I'll try and get as much as I can in the next couple of days. Um, Family of Tech said USA 2. Well, I would think it would be the same date. Um, is that where you live or USA? Is, no, I live in Australia, Family Tech, but uh, I, that's date the 14th was the Australian release date. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if it's not the US as well. Um, Langston says, well, that's down to your hand stability, yep. Um, or if you're geared up and put focus, will connection, so, oh yeah, if you use your focus, uh, yeah, you can use the gears and stuff like that to focus. Um, is that for USA 2 pre-ordering? Yes, well, I believe B&H have already put a note up. I'll stick a link down below. Uh, this as soon as we finish, so I'll stick a, a note down there, and you can um, uh, hopefully, if you are going to purchase one, guys, I'd love the support if you could get it through me. Um, the other live stream gave up. Viewers were dropping like flies. <laughs> That's not nice. They're great. I I, like I said, I wouldn't have done this, Mark. Uh, I said Tamron asked me to do it, um, so. They asked me to unbox it now. The original plan was to unbox this yesterday, but I wasn't allowed to because the announcement was today. Uh, so that was the unfortunate thing. Um, and I thought Jason and Danny were going an hour early and I thought, well, that's good. I'm gonna be able to make it because originally they had it scheduled at seven, I think. Um, and then I put mine an hour later, thinking that they would finish at that time exactly. Uh, so there was nothing we could do about it. Um, Langston said, I can think of any lens that I could zoom smoothly during video. That isn't just a power zoom uh, by hand he's talking about. Who cares? I can't go outside. I have the 72 GM anyway. I use it as a paperweight. <laughs> I feel you, Wexel. Um, here I said, no pre-order yet. Oh, okay, well, I'll check once I finish this and see what's happening. It must be fairly soon. Like I said, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be able to pre-order this shortly in Australia. Like I said, guys, I'm just going through co uh, questions here. Uh, I'm going to do a live autofocus and everything soon for you. Um, and then I'll, I've also got something else to unbox as well. Um, would you pick the Sony 20G Prime or the Tamron 17 to 28? Um, I'd go for the 17 to 28, but that's me, only because I find that being a wedding photographer, I need a, a wide angle lens. Um, so 20 mil often for when I'm doing group shots and things like that is not wide enough. Uh, the Sony 20 is an amazing lens, though. That's incredibly sharp. It's almost really like a G uh, lens, really. Uh, but I prefer the 24. I've got the 24 that you can see on this now. Um, I've got the 24 here, which I absolutely adore. So for me, a 24 is a bit more usable because um, I can do portraits and things like that with the 24. The 20 is a little bit wide. You start to get distortions and things like that. Uh, pretty good for landscapes. But... Um, I find I really uh, would prefer my, the way I shoot would be the 17 to 28. Um, if I need to go wider than that, I would buy it. I'm hoping Sony brings out a really wide angle prime or Tamron or someone, you know, brings out a 12 mil uh, that has autofocus. It's a really good lens. Um, I'm still waiting on that, but I, I would get the 17 to 28, but that's me. I find that the 20 is just not quite wide enough uh, and I've already got the 24. Um, Chris said, came off the Monday Live to see David. Welcome, Chris. Uh, family of Tech said, but he said it was going to be announced today. Does he mean ordering? Uh, well, I believe when uh, this was dropped off to me the other day, um, I think that Japan was going to announce this today. So I think Australian pre-orders are going to be available from today or the next few days. I, I mean, don't hold me 100% to that. All I know is it was going to be announced. That's probably why some other reviewers now have started to um, push them uh, out now because the, the review time now has officially been allowed to be done because the announcements have obviously been made in Japan. Um, so that's what's happened there. I would say that the pre-orders will come up fairly soon. If they, they're releasing this in uh, Australia on the 14th of May, they have to pre-order soon because that's what only a little over a month away. So you'd have to have pre-orders available fairly soon. And I would think that the US would be on a similar time frame. I would think. Um, Michael's here. G'day, Michael. How you going, mate? Um, Hero says, laugh out, 20 mil ain't that much really. Well, it didn't seem to make much when I did the shot, but wait until you see the comparison. I'll show you that. Uh, both of them, one shot at 200, the F4, and then I did the uh, Tamron 180 at 180. Um, so I'll show you what the difference is in the video review I'll put up in the next day or so. 
Um, Langston says, uh, I balance the Sony 70 to 300 on my Rowan S, uh, like after like 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, it can take a while. Um, I might, like I said, I might show that in the review. I'll see uh, if I have time. Mark said, refocus breathing never concerns me as I mostly shoot primes below 200. Um, like I said, I've never worried about focus breathing either though, but some people do, I don't. Um, the lens is what it is, and I don't know. People nitpicking all the time about everything. Langston says, uh, it's a valid concern if you are gonna drop 1,200 bucks on a lens. Um, it may be Langston, I suppose, if that's gonna bother you, but like I said, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I have never even thought about focus breathing to can be completely honest with you. Um, I just like to use the lens and see if it looks good for what I shoot. And that's really all that matters for me. I, I just like to be able to shoot at its maximum, like 180, and have a look at what the images look like out of camera uh, and things like that. I don't really get into the specifics of it, but that's the way that I review things. I review things more for real life. Um, and I've never really even thought about it, so I don't know. Uh, Tamron is uh, 28.6 ounces. Uh, I'll go through these specs in a minute, actually. Um, in the UK, uh, is this Tamron 70 to 180? All I can see is a can of cola. <laughs> I don't want to drop it. It's here. Here it is. Here it is if you haven't seen it. Let me get rid of my face so it goes in focus. There we go. It's all here. Woohoo! Um... Depends on who's buying it, uh, the panda said, yep, I agree, actually. Uh, Tamron is 28.6 ounces. Emails are blowing up now, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. The exchange rate is useless, exactly, Mark, it's terrible. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it. But I can tell you, there's probably no reason to buy it in the US and get a grey version either, because if you take the exchange rate into account, you're probably gonna buy it cheaper in Australia, and, and then you're not getting a grey version of this. Uh, because if you bought it, say, in the US for $1,900, uh, $1,200, by the time you add your exchange rate in, your shipping, you lose the warranty, it's not worth it. You're better off just to pay the 2300 Australian. You're still saving over 1000 over the GM. Uh, and that's before the price rises hit. Remember, everyone knows the price rises are going to hit all camera gear here in Australia due to the dollar dying as much as it is. Um, I would be... I would be too if I shoot Sony. The price point on these Tamra Zooms really makes E-mount more accessible for people on lower budgets. Exactly, they do. Uh, like I said, you can have the 28 to 75, the 17 to 28, and, and the 70 to 180 uh, for a reasonable price. Uh, it's incredible, really. And when you think the quality you're getting from these lenses, you're not losing anything in quality, I can tell you that much. Um, Mark said, uh, Australia pulls steel and other resources out of the ground only to export it so we can buy it back as a car. Crazy. Michael says, uh, you can do a 180 to a 180 test. Yep. Um, Sizzleman says, what did he say? 2,399 equates to 1,462. Yes, but we're paying tax. Uh, that's the difference, uh, Sizzle Man. Under the current exchange rate, so the Aussies are paying more than we do pay in the States. Yeah, you've got to add sales tax onto that, though. That's the difference. Um, we also get a two-year guarantee as well. Um, Stan the Man said 70 to 180 2.8 or 70 to 130 f2. I'm going to wait and see what the other one is. Yeah, I mean, that's another interesting lens from Tamron as well that's going to be coming out. Um, Rotolite is still around, yeah they are. Hero said that extra 20 millimeter really cuts down on the size. Uh, it does, uh, dramatically. Like I said, uh, there's things that you have to give away. I mean, if you wanted to um, have uh, the extra 20 mil on this, if you wanted to have the controls, and you want it to have internal stabilization, well then you're gonna be the same size as a GM. It, that, that's just the fact. Considering that they've been able to get this to be a 2.8 lens, at this weight and at this size, and the quality is amazing, is astounding really if you think about it. Uh, and that's particularly the thing that I'm, I'm more interested about than anything, because as you know, I don't wanna be walking around with a sore back and stuff like that. Kerry loved using this yesterday when she used it. She took some shots of me uh, and she, she went, wow, it's so light for nearly a 200 mil lens. And I said, yes, it is. Um, uh, let's go back. 
Hero said, that was my response uh, to you not putting the lens cap on and throwing your lens in your bag. <laughs> uh, the panda said, Sigma equals body lifting. It, it certainly does. Michael said, hit the likes. I really would appreciate it too, guys. Yeah, if you could uh, give me thumbs up, that does make a big difference. Susan Man said, Tamron's weight is 810. The Sigma Sony GM is 1480. It is a massive difference. Yep, yeah, that is an incredible difference, particularly if you're lugging that around for the whole day. Uh, so big difference. Um, the panda says, uh, but they made, it might be the same time frame due to the C. There are going to be delays in getting your lenses. Yeah, there could be. I mean, who knows? Uh, oh, the Sony F4 is 840. There you go. So I thought it was a fraction heavier. Uh, and the interesting thing is, like, Kerry did notice that, even the difference between this and that but you know i mean is that weight including this that might be the difference i'm not sure it could be including that which remember you don't get on this um but i suppose uh, uh, i didn't feel like i needed it when i had that uh, on my camera um Focus breathing effects reach though. Um, Langston says, it doesn't bug me. I just don't want to see others dismiss others' concerns. Yep. I can understand if it concerns you, well then it needs to be tested. Um, Mark said, could you fit the Tamron lens onto the body? Okay, so let me show you. All right, so let's put it on. Okay, so this is on the body itself. Um, so this gives you an idea about how how it's going to uh, how it's going to look, um, just as a guide. Um, I, I think it's a really nice fit. It, it feels really nice together. It actually looks really nice on the camera uh, as well. Um, like I said, I don't think you even need. Um, I know this has the what well, I can't even remember what you call that. <laughs> It hasn't got that on there, um, but it's not like it's a really, really heavy lens where you're putting a lot of weight on the body anyway. It's, it's you know, it's a very, very well balanced lens, um, and I think it fits it really beautifully. So that gives you an idea about the size. Now, obviously, if you're going to zoom it out, it does gain, you know, th that length that you're talking about there. Like I said, if I'm putting it on a gimbal, I'll be balancing it halfway through, uh, and then it, you can move either way, and it won't throw the gimbal off balance. Um, remember, it, you, you have to do this. There's compromises that have to be made to keep this down the size that it is. Uh, a GM won't do that, but then you're dealing with something that's a lot larger. Um, whereas this, there's compromises that have to be made to keep this down so small. Um, I, I loved it, and like I said, the focus was fantastic. So what we might try, uh, I might see if I can get my um, A9 out. And we'll try it with that, just because I can change the focus color on the A9, I'll use that. And we'll see if we can do a, a, a live focus for you all, uh, and see how it works. I'll just take it out of this rig. So let me just take this off. So bear with me a minute, just while I try and get this out of this... Uh, Rig, this was what I was using to test it with yesterday. All right, so as soon as I get this off, uh, I'll stick it onto the computer and we should be able to do a test. And I can show you the close focusing is a big difference on this um, compared to say a um, G Master or something like that. Is that off completely? No, it's still going. Because the close focusing is one of the big selling points of the Tamron lenses, I think. And I really do love using it. I'll take that off. I mean, I'll put it over here so it's out of the way. All right, so what we'll do is I'll put this onto that camera. And then I'll just show you how it focuses uh, in this. Because this is dark. This is quite dark in here. Um, I'm actually on 1000 ISO in here, so it's, it's actually quite dark in this room. Uh, so let me check uh, how this is. I'll have to put this in. I'll get a little Dalek out, so we can use a little Dalek to do a focus test. And 
then I'll turn this on and we should be able to, I'm not sure how, oops. So let me set this up. And let me change the focus point and then I'll show you how it works. I'm on video, I think. Oh, oh it's not going to show me because I'm connected via um, I'm connected via this. Uh, let me see if I can. I've just got to watch this because it's it's actually connected through this HDMI, so I'm not sure if it's going to show it. Let me just disconnect it for a second, and then I'll see if I can get it to work. Uh, where are we? Manual. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. I know why. I was still on video, I think. Yeah, okay. Let me see if I can bring that up a little bit. It may be too dark in here. I'll try the A7 III. Let me just try it on that. I think this was all set up for video. I've changed all the settings on that camera. Let me grab that for a minute. Because I was filming with this yesterday, I'm not certain what the all the settings are on there. Let me try this one, see if this was on video, if it was on 2.8. And Because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you live due to the fact of how that connects now through the ATM Mini. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Let me try and see. If not, I'll definitely show you when I put the video in. I was hoping that I could show you this live, but it's going off. The screen's actually going off in the back. So I don't think it's gonna work, guys. No, it's not gonna work. I've just changed to an ATM Mini, uh, and this interface um, is not letting me get the focus up through the back. I was hoping I could share it with you live, what the focus was going to be like. Um, <laughs> Sony AF is bust. No, it's not that, it's the ATM Mini's causing the issue. It's because I'm going through the uh, HDMI, uh, it's not letting me show the screen through here, because I can see through there, it's not working. Um, so I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. I'll have to show you, um, because I did, I'll explain what I did. Uh, yesterday, in yesterday's live, I put through using this, you can record the autofocus when I use this. Um, so what I did was I connected the A9 through this, and then that records the autofocus being used. Um, so you could see the squares, you could see the IAF being used, uh, you could see everything working through that. So I have recorded it and I can show you how fast the AF works. Uh, I just can't show you through this because it's not working through the ATM Mini, unfortunately. Um, so there's nothing I can do about that, I was, I, which is a shame because I would have loved to have showed that. Uh, I've done that previously, but I wasn't using the ATM. Which is a bummer because I would have loved to have showed how it works. All right, before I open up something else, let me. Ju I'm just going to quickly take you through this um, because I wanted to show you just compared to the GM. This was the review. Now I've done my own review, and like I said, I'll show you how the AF works and everything else. Um, uh, through here, um, I wanted to sort of talk about what he was saying about the GM, and then I'd sort of talk about it quickly how it compared to what my findings were yesterday. He said the design was very different to Sony. Yes, I'm only going to pull out a, a couple of these. Um, but he said it creates a very compact design compared to Sony's. The Tamron 70 to 180 with the hood is about the same size as the 70 to 200 without the hood. 10% um, reduction in focal length uh, leads to a much larger reduction in the size uh, in ten, uh, than 10%. I've taken a photo, so when I do my review, you'll be able to see the exact look of uh, the 180 as against the 200, and then you'll be able to make a decision on whether you think that's uh, important for you. All the Tamron zooms uh, share the 67 millimeter diameter filter. That is really critical um, because it means I only have to buy one filter set, which for me is fantastic. Um, what else have we got? Um, 
Tamron uh, 70 to 180 is 815 grams. The 70 to 200 is 1480. The 70 to 200 F4 is 840 grams. So it's the lightest of the lot of them. Um, it just said the reviewer prefers the white color. Uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, the, obviously, the Tamron Extend. So if that bothers you, that, that's an issue. Um, I wanted to talk about the close focus, though. Uh, this is important because the minimum focus distance of the Tamron is 80 centimeters. The Sony 70 to 200 is 96, and the Sony 70 to 200 f4 is 100. So you can get all well, not complete macro, but you know you have got a, like a macro look out of these. So if you, if you're in a pinch, you wanted to say get bride's details and things like that, you can do some uh, almost macro shots, and I'll show you those in the video review that I've done. Um, because I, I think it's a really good feature. Like I said, I've found it that it's not as good as what the Tamron 28 to 75 is. It's not quite as sharp at the edges, although the center seemed to be sharp, um, but it's still usable. If you, if you needed to use it, it's still usable, and you can get that nice close focus if you need to do it. Um, it says here too that the Tamron lens is visibly faster than Sony zooms when focusing on a subject. Most of the time, it weighs less, uh, it weighs less than the focus it can, I'm not sure what they're talking about there, but uh, it, it uh, I've found that it's definitely the fastest zoom that I've used. Uh, the zoom is really, really quick. I wish I could have showed you, but it wasn't gonna work through there. There's nothing I could do about it. I have to see once we finish this, if I can get it to work, I'll pop back on and just show another quick live if I can get it to work. Um, but you will see it in the review, because I did record it. Uh, on the Sony a7R4 at centimeter diameter, all this stuff there, I'm, I'm not going to even read some of that. But I'll put this down below so you can have a read anyway of all the different uh, things that's, that's in there. The main thing for me that when you're reading about this, his review backs up what I said, that the focus is faster on the Tamron. Uh, the um, uh, weight was amazing. The sharpness is also incredible. It, it is sharp from the center to the edges, which is also really good. Um, and that's about it, really, for that. So let me just go back to the chat to see if anyone else is saying anything before I look, show you this quickly, this other thing that I've got. Um, I laugh when people were saying the Sony AF is bust. I oh, know I laughed. Uh, camera USB control will let you do it. Hello, David and everyone. Hi, Sam. Uh, greetings, Sam, as well. Um, uh, what else are people saying back here? Uh, You're making me super nervous. I'm not sure what that was. Holding the oh, holding the A9 like that. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, what else are people saying? I'm waiting for the 70 to 130 F2, though. I can understand people could be interested in that. That's for sure. Uh, in my opinion, uh, see if the size of the F2 would be not too big. So I'll get that or get this, he's saying. Um, and that's about it, really. So stay tuned, I'm, I'm gonna unbox this other little thing for you in a second, just so you can have a look at it. So stay tuned, um, stay tuned for the full review. Like I said, I did review it yesterday in real life, uh, shooting uh, Kerry and doing some other things. I'm gonna show you multiple things. I'm gonna show you how fast the autofocus is. You'll see the actual dots and everything and the IAF working. So you'll see all that, because I recorded that through uh, uh, that little recorder that I've done, so I will be able to show you that in the live. Um, the other thing too is uh, I'll show you the close focus, how that works. I'll show you how the video autofocus works uh, as well. So there's lots of things that I'm gonna be able to show you um, with how this performs. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably try and start it today and it might get posted up uh, tomorrow. So the last thing I wanted to show you was just this little thing. I got this today, it came today. Um, I don't know whether any of you looked at this. This is called a little Godox R1. Uh, and I believe that this works with mobile phones. There's a Pro Photo light that they have a similar thing to this, um, but Pro, uh, unusually, Pro Photo I think copied Godox with this because the Pro Photo one is very, very similar. Uh, and Godox um, work. No, I haven't tried it with ASPC Stan. Um, so this little light. Now I'm going to read up on it, but I believe that is it magnetic. I've got to find something that's a magnet. No, it's, oh, it's got my case. Let me just take this off. I don't know whether it's magnetic or not. I'm just curious to see. 
I believe that this will also use uh, flash exposure with your mobile phone. I don't know whether it's magnetic. I'm just curious to see. No, it's not. Oh, it might be. No, it's not. Um, so this little device has multiple different things. Stay tuned and I'll review this fully. Like you can change your colors and everything else with this. But I also believe it syncs to your mobile phone uh, and it will give flash photography to your mobile phone. Um, so I'm really curious to give this a go. They asked me if I'd be interested to try it. Um, I'm really excited about giving it a go because it looks like it's really quite a powerful uh, little device. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's really cool. Like you've got your little LED that you can see through the back through here. Uh, where are we? You can see it's got an LED through the back there. Um, and then you can change your color. And mode. I haven't even looked at it yet, so I'm just guessing what it does, but let me just see if I can change. So you can go through all your different colors as well. Like that's red. Uh, it'll do all flashing and other things that things do as well. But what I like about this is the form factor. It's very small. But I believe, uh, now it could be proven wrong, but I believe when I looked at this, that, like I said, it would also work with your mobile phone. It actually flashes uh, using your camera and your mobile phone. So stay tuned for this. I believe these have just got released. Uh, they're called the Godox R1. Um, and anything like that, I love these light, I love lighting and stuff like that, so I'm really excited about trying that out uh, and letting you know how that goes. So stay tuned for that, uh, reviewers, as well. Um, the other thing too is, just before we go, uh, I did post a video yesterday talking about the Peak Design tripod, so if you're interested to know how that was or went, have a look at that as well. Um, but stay tuned for the uh, 70 to 180 Tamron lens because that will be coming up very, very soon. It'll either be up late today or it'll be up uh, early tomorrow sometime where you'll be able to see me using it in real life. Um, just be gentle on Kerry because she did not want to model at all. But due to the virus, I didn't want to ask a model or anything to come. Uh, so she graciously um, uh, volunteered to do it. And I think she looks beautiful in it anyway. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let me just check the chat before we finish. Um, Hero said, I wish the Sigma would make a full frame version of the old 18 to 35 and the 50, 50 to 100. Yeah, that would be great, actually. Uh, someone asked if I tried it on an APS-C. No, I haven't. Uh, but it would work really, really well on an A6400 or the A6600. Only thing you've got to remember on the A6400, there's no stabilization. An A6600, there is, so it'll be fine. I found not having stabilization on these uh, to be no issue at all because you've got three body in axis stabilization. So I, I didn't find that to be a problem at all. Um, David is about to open up the A7S III. I wish, Michael. Uh, I wish. Uh, did you try it on APS-C? Yeah, that's what that was as well. Um, and that's about it. So thanks for um, thanks for staying. Uh, sorry if I dragged you away from Jason's. Like I said, I, I didn't have a choice today because uh, they asked me if I could post this at um, 1 p.m. Melbourne time uh, due to you know that being released at that time. Uh, so apart from that, everyone, thank you so much. Tomorrow I'll be live with Aaron. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, that'll be at the usual time, which I think is 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock New York time. Um, so stay tuned for that, the live show that we'll be talking about there. I might even talk more about the Tamron uh, with Aaron tomorrow, actually, because I'll be shooting a couple of extra things today, uh, like some macro shots uh, and things like that. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, as well. Um, so we're live with Aaron, and then on Thursday, US time, Europe time, Friday, my time, I've got my usual Sony Alpha News and Rumors uh, show as well. So I've uh, got stacks and stacks uh, coming up in the coming days. Um, so stay safe, everyone, um, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.